thinking about what the Word of God said about meditating upon the Word of the Lord both day and night. And uh, a lot of times the Lord will wake me up in the middle of the night and scriptures will be rolling in my mind or, or I'll be sitting there and I'll, I get to thinking about certain things and scriptures start rolling in my mind. And I wouldn't dare tell you that I know what God's doing every time He does it. And, uh, but I will tell you this today, God knows what He's doing. So, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm probably going to cover some uh, stuff this morning that you've heard over and over again, but it's needful sometimes uh, for us to take and um, read, go over some of the Word of God, not that it gets stale or it gets old, but it's said to take heed to the things which you have heard, lest you let them slip. There was things I learned in high school that just stuck in my mind, and uh, I, you know, I, I, sometimes it'll come back to me, some of it. Um, I learned a whole lot of stuff before I got in church, and uh, I, I love to laugh. Um, I've heard preachers get up and, uh, boy, they run you down if you smile. I don't believe in all that old foolishness. Well, I found a scripture that said that laughter is good medicine. So I believe we need to look into the Word of God. You know, we're a lot of times let the devil quote our scripture and cheat us out of the good things that God's got for us. So, I don't really know today whether or not you've really considered the fact that how blessed you are to be able to hear the truth. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about all the truth because I don't have it. And I said it before, I said it again. You don't either. Well, if you live to be a hundred, you'll still be learning. Thank God. So whenever we come to the house of God and open the Word of God, we need to open our heart and our mind to hear what the Spirit does say to the churches. So I'm going to say this, and you can take it and th you know, hash it any way you want to. But if the Word of God was written by holy men of old, as they were inspired by the Holy Ghost, it's going to take the Holy Ghost today for you to really grasp what the Word of God says. So, there's a lot of scriptures today that I really like to go over, but I don't have time to do a whole lot, so I guess that's why you can take more than one service to bring out a particular thing that the Lord wants to brought out. But, in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the fifth verse, it said that there's one Lord, there's one faith, and there's one baptism. Right. Now, saying that, you can't build nothing off of one scripture. Now, when we think about the word of the Lord and how precious it is and how deceived some people are, now, I like to prove what I say by the Word of God. Amen. Everybody that's got a head has an opinion. Now, my opinion and yours don't amount to little beans, but what does matter is what the Word of God says. Right. Now, the Apostle Paul one time was called Saul and he was on the Sanhedrin council and he was on up pretty well in the religious group of that day and he himself said he, of the Pharisees he was the, of the strictest sect. So he went around persecuting the church and putting them in jail and some say he even submitted to more deaths 
and weakness more than just Stephen, but nevertheless, he was fighting the church with everything he had and didn't realize he was wrong. Now, he was as dedicated as he could be, but he was dedicated to the wrong cause. So therefore, we need to remember the Word of God tells us to make your calling and election sure. Now, I don't believe it's the Lord's intent for you and I to hope in as much as the Apostle Paul said that if I'm in this life only I have hope, then I of all men will be most miserable. Now, I believe the Lord wants us to have some assurance. We sing that song, Blessed Assurance, there's a lot of meaning in it. But I want to begin reading the 41st verse in the second chapter of the book of Acts. Now, this 41st verse here, I want to point something out to you about the Word of God. Very few people in that day and time could read and write. Very few of them had very much education. So therefore, there were no Bibles at that particular time. It was printed as we have them today. The Bible is still the number one book on the market today, and I don't know this, but I figure it's probably one of the most least read. But nevertheless, there are plenty of them out there, and if a person don't read it, it's their fault. Now, it said when they had gladly received his word, were baptized the same day, there were added to them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that were believed were together and had all things common. Now, I was thinking about these scriptures said they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Now, if Ephesians said there wasn't one faith, then we better find the one true faith. It said that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, in line of the word truth, I want you to understand that the same truth that will set you free will condemn you too. So, somebody said one time, the truth ain't never hurt nobody. Yes, it has. You know, a lot of times people uh, say other things and one thing and the other and they don't really think out what they're saying. But friend, if you are wrong, the Bible said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Now it is a blessing when they find fault with you and persecute you for doing right. But it ain't no blessing, believe you, when you're wrong. Now the Apostle Paul was wrong. Well, the Lord had to get his attention somehow because he was trying his best to do right. And he was using all he had. That's the way a lot of people are. So, while the Lord didn't agree with Saul at that time, he loved him. He didn't love how he was persecuting the church. But at that time, he was a very educated person. I guess today you could probably say he had a doctorate degree in divinity. In as much as the way he was educated, and that's why probably that the Lord chose him to, read, uh, to write two-thirds of the New Testament. But when he wrote, he had to be sure that what he penned 
and took down and was right. And it's sad to say today that a lot of preachers will get up behind the pulpit and they'll preach their opinions. The Bible said that to lean not upon your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge God. Confucius might have a lot of wise sayings, but I believe Solomon had far more in the book of Proverbs that would be considered correct according to Scripture. But there are a lot of people today that will pick up sayings and run with them when all the time they're absolutely wrong. But the Lord intervened in Saul as he could become later in his life and he fixed him where he couldn't look no other way except to him. He put him on his back on the ground and the scripture said he's seen a light. And apparently it must have burned his eyes like when you well something. But anyway, he was blind for a period of time. Now, did you know there are a lot of people today that are spiritually blind? And unfortunately, the problem with that is you would have never heard the truth and come to the light of God's gospel if somebody hadn't have taught you. Amen. Now, these people that we consider oftentimes as our enemy, you know what? I'm not a Mormon. I'm not a, yeah, I am, I am a Jehovah's Witness. The only difference is, is I know who Jehovah is. He is the one true God. And Acts 4 and 12 said, that there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. So really we're all supposed to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Acts first chapter and eighth verse said that after that which the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power and you shall be my witness. Now I believe we're supposed to carry this gospel to the world. And now what it confuses me about people that's uh, missionaries, whenever they started out preaching the gospel and the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost, before they ever went anywhere else, they evangelized Jerusalem. Now, it's good to be an evangelist, but an evangelist is true as part of a fivefold ministry. But I think we all can be evangelists because we can witness and carry the Word of God and enlighten people's mind, but we need to be careful what we teach them. Praise the Lord. Because Paul was teaching something new. And he was persecuting the church. If people find out that you're Jesus' name, they'll persecute you. For what? For doing something wrong? No, that's, that's what the Bible teaches. Now, they persecuted Jesus too, didn't they? Well, I'm going to tell you today that if you live right and live according to the Word of God and follow the commandments of the Word of God, you will be persecuted as many as live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. Not for doing wrong, but the world today has a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. If your relationship with God didn't change you at all, you need to start over again. You know, 
whenever I came to the Lord and I really got an encounter with God just like the Apostle Paul, the Lord changed my mind. Praise the Lord. My mind was completely changed. The things I used to enjoy, I didn't want no part of no more. The places I used to want to go, I didn't want to go there no more. There was a complete change. Thank God. Now, there are people today that profess a form of godliness, but they still live the same way they did before they ever came to God. But now, I was born a wood, and whenever they put up my gravestone or whatever, they more than likely have wood right on that. But the name that I'm really most proud of today is that I took on the name of Jesus through water baptism. So, whenever we look here, we we'll find out, and I haven't got time this morning to go through all these scriptures, but in the second chapter of the book of Acts, the 37th verse, said that they sent unto Peter to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be ye baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. Praise the Lord, and he said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, when the Bible lets us know that whenever the gospel was preached, the death, the burial, and the resurrection are repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and in filling of the Holy Ghost, certain things take place. I'd like to ask you today why it is that some preachers say that the death of the last apostle was the end of the gifts in operation in the church. No more healing. No more tongues, interpretation of tongues. No more word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. So, that died with the last apostles. But I'm going to be honest with you. That's what they say, but that's not what happened. Now, if we're going to get to the truth, we're going to find out where the apostles went about preaching the word of God and even in one particular place it said the shadow of one of them fell on this person and they were healed. Right. Now, I, I've thought about it a lot of times. These things should still be in the church. Right. Amen. Right. You know they talk about where there shall be prophecies they shall cease. Where there shall be knowledge, shall cease. Where there shall be tongues, they shall cease. Well, on the day of Pentecost, they spoke in tongues. The first Gentiles spoke in tongues. The disciples of John the Baptist in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts Said when Paul would pass through the upper coast of Ephesus and find a certain disciples, said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Well, they were just like a lot of other people today. They haven't heard, they haven't had it talked to them. Praise the Lord. So therefore, they don't know about the Holy Ghost. But there again, when the apostles expounded the Word of God to them, and they asked him the question and said, Under what then were you baptized? And they said, Under John's baptism. Then they said to the disciples of John the Baptist, and they said, John indeed baptized in repentance, saying unto them which should come after that, praise the Lord, they should believe on him which should come after, which is Christ Jesus. And it said that when they heard this, or they heard the word, they were baptized, and when they laid hands on them, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. 
Now, the disciples of John the Baptist was not the disciples of Jesus. So if the disciples of John the Baptist spoke in tongues, that blows it out the water about with the death of the last apostles, there were no more signs to say it is. So it would, as the preacher said, it behove us to look into the Word of God. There are a lot of people with wonderful educations. There's nothing wrong with education. I'd be wonderful if we all had more. But I marvel that these preacher factories and they're turning them out, giving them license and giving them a doctor divinity degree and they get them a church. What it is, they get them a job. Right. They get a good salary. Uh, tw over 20 years ago, I was one in 15 mile here was getting $115,000 a year. He had a parsonage, he had a vacation, he had his utilities paid, and uh, what he did is he preached on Sunday morning and Sunday night, and uh, Wednesday night, but if the service better not be over an hour long, or the pulpit committee would have him front and center so he had to preach what they told him to preach the way they wanted it preached. I'm going to tell you why. Because Isaiah said they were like dumb dogs. They would not bark when the enemy comes in. They were hirelings. We don't need hirelings. We need somebody that will tell us the truth. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm going to uh, hush and before I do I want to I want to say this we need a revival we need to be praying for revival but when we have revival don't nobody get mad at me we don't need to be sitting here and when somebody sings patty cake patty cake patty cake we don't come here to praise singers. We come here to praise God. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Which is good to give honor where honor is due. But remember our purpose is to lift up Jesus. The Bible said if I be lifted up, I draw all men to me. Praise the Lord. So if we have revival, our primary purpose is to come here and praise God. And we don't have to worry about nothing else. If we'll come in here with thanksgiving yes. and praise upon our lips. I'm here to tell you, amen, the Spirit of God will do its work yes. and hearts will be touched and people will come into repentance. And then we can teach them to be baptized in Jesus' name. Hmm. You know, most preachers I know are uh, condemn you for baptizing in Jesus' name. But if that's so, then one that wrote Colossians was wrong. I think it was Paul, and, uh, and he wrote to the Colossian church. <coughs> Colossians 3 and 17 said, Whatever you do, whether it be in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Yes. Who is the Lord? Jesus. Praise God. Amen. We love you and appreciate you this morning. They want to do some stuff. So I want you to bear this in mind. And uh, praise the Lord. Let's, let's, let's be sincere about what we believe. Because the Lord's really tearing me up about this. These other people are not our enemy. They're our potential candidates for the Holy Ghost. And we should be more concerned about witnessing to them and winning them than we are criticizing them. Praise the Lord. God bless you.